How, how I came to live in the Arctic is, is a lovely story because I, I remember it so well. I was in the early 90s, I was in Dublin. I'd finished uh, university and the Celtic Tiger hadn't woken up. And I was working as a bicycle courier. My memories of those days, it was pouring rain. And I went to the Finnish embassy because I'd applied for a scholarship. And uh, they told me I'd got it and I was absolutely over the moon. And then I had to look in an atlas to see where, where was Finland because I really didn't know a lot. And I left behind Dublin. And in those days, people had coal fires. And Dublin was this, in the winter, would be this amazing smog of a mixture of hops from the Guinness Brewery and uh, coal smoke. And it's this just, if I smell it now, I'm straight back to Dublin. When I came to study here, I was very lucky to meet my future wife because I did my uh, field studies in the very north of Finland on salmon fishing on the Tenno River, which is the border between Finland and Norway. And uh, we uh, fell in love, we got married, and we've been married now for over 20 years. We have two kids. She's uh, Sami, and Sami are the indigenous people of northern Finland, Sweden, Norway, and a little bit of Russia. Our family is uh, uh, trilingual, which is a real privilege for me, who came from a monolingual background, that we've come and we have created a family that speaks three languages every day. So they learn Finnish at school, their mother speaks to them in Sami, and I speak to them in English. So if we think of uh, indigenous peoples in the Arctic, there's an incredible uh, linguistic and cultural diversity, and it's a real global treasure. The Sami have an amazing language for snow, and it's really diverse, and each word is like a, is like a library of meaning. So if we think of, of for example, Sami have really an ancient relationship with reindeer, and that's reflected in their language. Reindeer are herded in many, many countries, and they are the same animal, but they're herded by different peoples in different ways. If we look at in Finland, for example, where we are now, uh, you have Finnish people herding reindeer. In fact, any member of the European Union is allowed to own and herd reindeer in Finland. Also, Sami people herd reindeer. Reindeer are uniquely adapted to living in this climate because it goes from minus 40 to minus 50 up to plus 30. Each single reindeer hair is hollow. Uh, that gives insulation in the cold and it also helps them float when they swim because they're fantastic swimmers. Inside the leg of a reindeer, inside the marrow, is oleic acid which is kind of like a, an antifreeze which means that their legs don't freeze because there isn't much muscle and blood network running through the legs. Reindeer love mushrooms, uh, as do all uh, ruminants. They love mushrooms and they go wild for them. And when they eat them, they, they go a little bit crazy and they're hard to, to gather again. So the reindeer herd is always worried about a good mushroom year because their reindeer are just going to go crazy. But if we look at climate change, the impact on reindeer is really substantial and it's already being felt like it, it is predicted that in the next 50 to 60 years the most intense places for warming is going to be in the Arctic and that's around the whole globe and it's one of the reasons that uh, many countries and people are becoming more concerned about what's happening in the Arctic. I think that uh, it's, it's really easy to get overwhelmed with the bad news about clim the climate crisis but I do think that uh, there are really encouraging signs in the way that scientists and indigenous peoples and local peoples are working together to look for pathways to the future that are sustainable. And I think that those efforts will help kind of drive the policies that we really need to see changed. I think uh, being Irish in the Arctic has been a real bonus because you don't meet many Irish people in the Arctic. They, they tend to go different directions. And being Irish has opened a lot of doors for me personally because people really generally like Irish people. I have no idea why, but they like Irish people. And a lot has come down to Irish people are, are great conversationalists in general. And uh, Finnish people like people who talk a lot because they tend not to talk so much. 
and uh, Finns are very good at periods of silence and Irish people are terrible at periods of silence. If you're Irish, you're, you're kind of tend, you're, if there's a pause in the conversation, you need to fill that up with stuff. If you're Finnish, uh, you will let the silence happen. And I have learned a lot about the power of silence and between people, but also the silence that you have in nature, because it's all around. And you don't need a lot of sounds in nature. And nature really teaches you about the power of silence.